Isn't it good to be together tonight? We're going to have a good time. There's some more stuff to happen tonight. Um, besides the Word of God, obviously, we, we, we love the Word. And Wednesday nights, we, you need, really need to encourage your friends and your family to get here because we're going to continue until God tells us to stop Wednesday nights. That's how we operate. Amen. Until the Lord says, okay, it's enough, now send them back to their homes. Listen to this, what the Bible says in, in the New King James Version of John chapter 3 from verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's a word for you. God didn't send his son to condemn you, but to save you through Jesus. Amen. So it's not a condemnation that needs to come upon you. It's freedom in Jesus Christ. And I want to touch on that word there where it says, where it says tonight, where it says for, that whoever, verse 15, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That whoever believes, the word believes there. I want to touch on that word belief because it's the word faith. And I want to touch on the, on, the, on, the, on the Greek word, which is pistio, P-I-S-T-E-U-O. And it's, it's quite a strange word, but it, it's got a, a vast meaning. And it's to have faith in God, because those that have faith in the Lord will not perish, but will have eternal life. And it's, it, it's contrasting to, to what Moses brought. Moses brought the law, and the law needed perfection. And we know that none of us are perfect. Come on, look at the person next to you. Are they perfect? Huh? Look at that lady next to you. She's close, but, you know, <laughs> she's perfect. Yeah. I mean, she brought you. Eh? <laughs> she brought you here. So, so the thing is, sometimes, you know, we, we attain to something. We work so hard to get God's attention. We work so hard to work into heaven. We want to build the Tower of Babel all over again. We want to, in our own efforts, in our own thing, we want to push this thing. And we get tired, Taryn, and we get worn out, and we get to a place where we say, man, I'm tired now of pushing this Christian thing. Lord, I'm pushing this thing. Don't you see my efforts? I'm praying early in the morning. I'm coming to church every Sunday. I'm part of the worship team or whatever. You know, I'm doing all this stuff for you. But God, all God is looking for is pure simple childlike faith the lord's asking you to believe in him the lord's asking you do you believe that christ accomplished what he said on the cross do you believe that he is the savior do you believe that he went to the grave do you believe that he was raised from the dead do you believe that he is the son of god do you believe he's the christ the son of the living god as peter had this amazing revelation and we needed a revelation in the church again of who jesus is because that's the cornerstone of the church. The cornerstone of the church is not great preaching or great uh, worship or all that stuff. It's Jesus. When you walk through the doors, this is about Jesus. This meeting's about Jesus. When we get together on a Sunday or on a Wednesday, it's about Jesus. He's the cornerstone. And if we don't get that right, we'll get nothing else right. Everything else will fall apart. And we must have faith. And, and this word faith is, is this pistio word. To be persuaded of. Are you persuaded? Are you persuaded that Jesus is the only way? You can't sit in your mind with new age ideas that many roads lead to heaven. You have to be persuaded because that's a lie of the enemy because people are trying to put this thing out that, oh, well, that's a good person, that Muslim guy's a good guy, that Hindu guy's a good guy, that um, Hare Krishna ladies, uh, whatever. You know, so at the end of the day, we have these confusions in our head because we're not persuaded that Jesus is the only way. That the cross is the only way. And the reason why you don't witness with fiery witness is because you're not persuaded. You're not persuaded. And we need to be persuaded. And only the Spirit can do that. And the second thing about this word is to place confidence in. To place confidence in. That's what it means. Do you place confidence in God? Are you confident that God hears your prayers? Pam? Are you confident that God hears your prayers? Are you confident, Margaret? Mavis, are you confident that God hears your prayers when you pray? Are you confident when you go into that prayer room and you sit on your knees? Are you going in there sort of like, oh, I hope the Lord is in a good mood today. Lord, I hope, you, I hope you're in a good mood today. Are you going to hear me today? Are you going to be deaf today? Are you, Lord, do I have to pray 10 hours or 10 minutes? I don't know, Lord. Do you still hear my prayers? The third one, 
the third meaning for this word, the substance or conviction of things hoped for, the assurance of things not seen. And that's Hebrews 11 verse 1. The substance, the substance or the conviction of things hoped for. The substance. Faith is the thing that attains what you hope for. It's the substance. Faith is that thing that takes hold of the things you hope for. What are you hoping for? Hmm? Hoping your husband would come right? <laughs> or for a husband? <laughs> or are you hoping, hoping for, are you hoping for a better life? Are you hoping for a better job? Are you hoping for more health in your body? Are you hoping for your children to get saved? Are you, what are you hoping for? Faith is the thing that will bring that to you. Not faith in anything but Jesus. The finished work, that Jesus is able to save everybody. Are you going to stop praying or are you going to have hope in Him? The assurance of things not seen, man. When we pray, we can't see what's happening. That's why you're there on your knees and you're praying into the spiritual realm. You're saying, Lord, I can't see it yet, but I believe it's there. You see, because God is outside of time. How many of you know that? God doesn't exist on the 24-hour clock. In the beginning, I didn't believe there was, there was much time involved. God, God doesn't sit in heaven and say, Ooh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, <laughs> time's running out. No, no, He's outside. God can go to before you were born. God can go into where your mother's womb was. God, you know, when you minister to people, past somewhere, they get healed right there, right in the womb. I prayed for a lady once that bent over here into a fetus position and started screaming. Why? Because something happened when her mother was pregnant with her. And she needed to be healed from the rejection that she felt in her mother's womb. You see, the Holy Spirit, that's God. God doesn't need, oh no, God needs 10 hours. He's still going to tomorrow. God's not only just in tomorrow. He's in eternity. God is outside of the timeline. He moves to before you were born. He moves to when your grandparents were there. He moves to when they were born. He moves to cut curses off there already. You see, the blood is relevant everywhere. It's not like God's not in boxes. We sometimes put God in these boxes of time, but God is outside of time. He goes into your next year and 10 years from now and 20 years. He knows your timeline. So why are you so stressed about who God is? Number four, absolute dependence upon and reliance in the Word of God. Matthew 8, verse 8 to 10. Absolute dependence and reliance upon on the word of God. Is the word your bread? Matthew 8 verse 8 to 10. I'm not going to read all of these scriptures. In Romans 10 verse 17. What does Romans 10 17 say? Faith comes by? Hearing by the? Faith comes by? And hearing by the word of God. If you want more faith, have more word. You want to build your faith. Don't just go to faith meetings and hyped up meetings you need to get into the Word to build your faith. When you have the Word, the faith will come out of you automatically eventually. Because the thing is, when you build into the Word... Here's a word for many of us here tonight. The reason why you have a lack of faith is because you're not spending time in the Word of God. It's as simple as that. We sometimes look for other things. Oh, I don't have faith because I'm a weak in my faith. I don't have faith because I do not do the things the devil does on the stage. I don't have faith because I'm not called to the ministry. I, we have all these other reasons, but the reason why your faith is weak is because the word in your life is weak. True? Maybe not. Good. Full surrender. This word also means full surrender yieldedness and obedience to all known truth. Full surrender. We spoke about surrender tonight in our worship. Not about me. It's about you, Lord. It's about your glory. It's about your fame. It's about you. Are you fully surrendered to God? Are you yielded to Him and obedient to all known truth in the Word of God? Everything in the Bible? Or do you pick what you like? <laughs> uh, quickly, when you get to that scripture that says, that wasn't for me. <laughs> the Lord says they repent. No, that was for someone else. I like the good parts. I like the part that says, Julius, you're a son of God. Julius, you were bought with a price. Julius, you're full of power, glory. Julius, pray for the sick. Julius, you can sing a new song. Julius, oh, lovely, I feel so great about myself. And then the Lord rebukes you in the next verse. 
Ah, and then you go, oh, that's not for me, Lord. I, I used to read the Bible when I was younger like that. I used to go, oh, I hate these parts in the Bible. Let's skip them. Ah, here's the nice parts. Lack. Hmm? What about the hard parts? What about the parts that are difficult to obey? What about the part that says, love your neighbors, you love yourself? What about the part, woo, what about the part that says you must pray for your enemies? Love those that persecute you. <laughs> we don't like those parts. We go, no, surely, Lord, you want to take them out. One person wants to say, surely the Lord wants to send them to hell. I said the Lord doesn't want to send anybody to hell. You need to pray for them. Amen? Love your enemies. How do you love your enemies? Only if you look at them through the eyes of God. Of faith. Faith will put you on a different level. Your faith is not in your own ability or own way to deal with things or handle things. You'll begin to love your enemies, pray for them, love those that persecute you, love those that hate you. In actual fact, there's a great man of God that once said, it's like a tonic to his anointing. When people persecute him, attack him, and come against him, the more he prays for them, the more God uses him mightily in, the, in other areas. You know why? Because you have the heart of God then. Because God doesn't react to people. Do you know this? God doesn't react to people's emotion. God doesn't react to how people treat each other. God doesn't react. God is God. He's perfect. And God places that same ability in you, Gordon. When someone persecutes and speaks badly of you, now you can't go speak badly of them. You have to love them. Pray for them. Okay? Doesn't mean you have to be their best friend. Doesn't mean you have to invite them into your house to have cake every day. It just means you need to pray for them and love them. And you see, God will break down that thing of hatred unforgiveness, all that stuff which the enemy wants to bring in. Some of us run away from unforgiveness. That's a word tonight. If you have faith in God, you will forgive people. Even the people that have spoken the worst things about you. Even the people that your worst enemy right now. And I ask, ask God's Spirit to give you the grace to forgive them. The reason why we forgive is because Jesus has forgiven you. Casey, you know the Lord forgave you? Of everything, the day when you came to him, he said, Casey, everything you've done wrong, I forgive you because you've repented and turned away from those things. Now you can't hold it against anybody else. Now you're going to say, Ooh, I was forgiven. Now I can't be unforgiving towards others. Let's move on. This word also means to trust wholly, fully, in other words, and un unreservedly in the faithfulness of God unreservedly in the faithfulness of to trust wholly, fully. Do you trust fully in God's faithfulness? Do you believe that God is faithful in everything? Do you believe that God is going to come through at the end of the day? Do you believe that even when you don't feel God there, He's still there? Do you know that's faith? If you don't feel it, come on. In this generation, people want to feel everything. They want to feel good in every service. They want the goosebumps in every service. They want to feel good experience. But even if you don't feel it, God is still there. His faithfulness doesn't end. And the scripture there for it is Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34. I'm going to just mention the last. we just got three more here. Give oneself over to a new way of life. Romans 1, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 7. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 7. Give oneself over to a new way of life. Have you begun to live a new life? Does your life look the same as before you got saved? I hope not. Because that means you're not saved. Come on, in church often we have too many people that come and nothing changes. Something must change. There's a new life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. There's now a new creation. The old is gone. You've become a new creation in Christ. You've been made. All the old things have fallen away. Everything old. It looks different now. It's not the same Melissa that was before. The BC days, the naughty Melissa. <laughs> Look at the devil, yes. <laughs> Amen. God redeems you, takes you from that place. Does your life look different? Has something changed in your life? If it hasn't, come before the Lord. Give over, believe, have faith in Him. And He's going to fill you. And then number eight, the attributes of God and restored faculty of man whereby both can bring into existence things that are unseen. Wow. The attributes. Both can bring into existence the unseen. 
man and God together. In other words, we can bring things that we can't see into existence. Do you believe that? I've seen it. I believe it. We've seen it during revival times when eyes open that are blind, when legs grow back. What about that Smith Wigglesworth one when the guy had to go fit the shoe on when he didn't have a foot? And when he put his foot into the shoe, the, the foot grew back into the shoe. The unseen things, we have the ability in God, in God, not, uh, not outside, to call things that are unseen into the scene. Deaf ears. That year that they said, no, we give up on this year. I said, do this a need. Can next worry. <laughs> I've prayed for deaf ears and they've opened. Pa. They had a pop. Hey, stutter on. Stuck my finger in the guy's ears. <laughs> Pray for him. <laughs> Can you hear anything? Oh, take my fingers out first. <laughs> said he heard a pop. Pa. 50% hearing back. I said, let's pray some more. Ah. 100% hearing back. God is able. Even the doctor looks in there and says, what happened here? It was all damaged. Nothing was working. Now it's working again. We are the ability of the attributes of God to bring the unseen things into the scene. Through faith. This is the same word. This word means all of this. And the last, the last two, the whole body of revealed truth. Is what this word means. The whole body of revealed truth. Luke 18 verse 8. Jude 3. Romans 10, 17. We've spoken about already. And then the last one. Joyful faith in and acceptance of Christ as the substitute for sin and our Savior, whereby, our, uh, whereby one receives salvation. So joyful faith in and acceptance of Christ as the substitute for sin. That's what faith is. You put your faith in the cross because Jesus took your place, took your sin upon His body. He became sin so that you become righteousness. He took all your sinfulness and became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You became that righteousness. Amen. You stand now in the place where Christ says, My blood is over you. I've washed you. I've cleansed you. I've bought you with a price. Now, if you have faith in God, that's the faith you have in what Christ did there. He substituted. He took your place. You and I are guilty. Come on. Everyone here is guilty tonight before God. We were guilty, but Jesus said, I'm going to take your place, Sandy. Charmaine, I'm going to take your place. Jesus said, I'm going to put, I'm going to put myself on the cross. That it's Charmaine. The minute that Charmaine says, I believe what Jesus did on the cross, that he paid the full price, Jesus says, now, now you become my daughter. Because now you receive what I've done for you. I've took your place. I washed you. I cleansed you. I took all unrighteousness, all sin away from you. You are now a new creation in Christ when you believe what Christ did there. Then he went to the grave and he overcame death. Now you have new life in him. Now you have eternal life in him. Now you won't die. Once you die, you're with Christ. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. And the Lord would say, you are my daughter. I love you. Restored in him. All everything of your past is over because of what Christ has done on the cross. And you've received it by faith. This one word, faith. Isn't it amazing that that word in the... And that's why I love looking sometimes at the Hebrew and the Greek because 10 different things that that word actually means. That thing, do you believe? Those that believe will not perish but will have eternal life. And um, tonight, I just feel there's... there's, there's the, I don't know how many there are, but the, uh, the ones that I do know of that I need to pray for... And I want to anoint you tonight, and Shelly, you're one of them, so <laughs> you knew it already before I even called you, and Moira, you're one of them as well. I want to pray for you as well. There's something um, happening in the Spirit, and, and I need to call the two of you to the front so we can pray for you. How's that? Hey, it's Women's Month. I'm calling women to the front. <laughs> God is good. And, and, and first of all, I, I, saw, I saw you uh, in the Spirit as a flower opening up again. And I saw God restoring ministry over your life because there, there's ministry calling on your life. And sometimes we, we, we're in the, in the desert for a long time and we go through wilderness periods as we call that. And it doesn't mean those times are wasted. It doesn't mean that those times are lost. But, but I do see tonight, I saw a flower. And I saw that flower opening up again. And the Lord said He's, he's restoring so much what the enemy has stolen from you because there's been layers and layers upon confusion and lies that the enemy has placed in your mind and your heart. And God wants to heal you and restore you tonight. And as I anoint you tonight, I believe that the, the gifts that you have that you carry from the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has gifted you. We all have gifts from the Spirit, but those spiritual gifts will be reawakened inside of you again because the Holy Spirit is waiting 
for you to say yes. And, and tonight, I, 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 yes, I'm saying yes on your behalf, but you're standing here and you've come tonight and you said to me, you're coming back home. So you come back home to this church where, you, where God set you in the ministry in the first place. And, and so it's not coincidence that even Pastor Moira was set in the ministry in, the, in this house as well. So, and, and, and those days, I remember um, leaving P and, and handing the worship leading over to Shelly. Shelly was our worship leader in this church, for those that didn't know. Um, but she's back in the house, and a long journey, a long, long journey coming around here, but back, back here. And it's not about the place, and it's not about the open door so much, but there is significance in it. There's definitely significance because God says it's come full circle back to restoring the ministry that's upon your life. And, 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 and you don't have to fear and you don't have to stress about time and, and what it looks like because you know that as you surrender to God, you've been there many times in your life. You have served God in full-time capacity with your husband in the past and God will restore over you. No, 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 not a husband. <laughs> There's no husband in the picture. But, but the Lord's talking about specific gifting and so... The Lord will restore that with confidence and boldness. I believe that you're going to be as bold as you've ever been before and more. And so the Lord wants to restore that tonight. So we're going to pray over Shelley tonight. Amen. So just as you keep your hands open to the Lord to receive from Him that anointing. Father, just as we anoint Shelley tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the increase of that anointing again, Lord, that you unlock and that you heal and that you restore, Father, that which the enemy has stolen. And Lord, I thank you tonight, even as I lay my hand upon her head, Father, that anointing oil begin to flow from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. Lord, that the increase of the anointing will come and crush every stronghold and everything that the enemy has held against her in her mind and in her life and in her heart, in Jesus' mighty name. And I would say tonight, the Lord would say that He would make you worthy again. He would make you worthy. His blood makes you worthy. His anointing in your life. He has washed you, has cleansed you. You are forgiven. You're His daughter. You are walking in His sight. Beautiful. You are walking in His sight perfectly. You are walking because God says, I will make you walk and I will make you run. And I will make you leap. And I will make you sprint. And I will make you run ahead. And God says, I will put in your mouth a song. And I will put in your heart a word in season. And the Lord would say, I would speak to you in the day and in the night. I will speak to you in the vision and in the dream. I will speak to you in the times when you don't expect it. And even now, God would say, I would increase those visions and those dreams that I've been giving over, over to you already. And you've been experiencing some things already, but God says the enemy has tried to take that. And in Jesus' mighty name, restoration now. Healing now. Healing now. Healing now. Healing now. Healing now. Healing now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Healing now, healing now, healing now, healing in Jesus' name. Let it be done according to His word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you restore that. Thank you, Lord, that you restore deep calls unto deep. As deep calls unto deep. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. What an amazing grace that our Father has over our lives. That He loves us so much that He would restore our broken hearts. Don't underestimate what the Spirit can do. He can do amazing things in a very short period of time. But you've been prepared right up to this point. And He will continue with you. You've gone through deep waters. But he will use that to heal you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Amen. Another hug coming up. <laughs> okay. I want to sneeze. Yeah. God is good. Come on, there's some other people that are being healed in here. Who's that young girl with a cap sitting there? Why don't you come as well before we move on from this point? Sorry, Pastor Moira, that I'm keeping you waiting. <laughs> there's just a healing happening in your life. Amen. I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. I just feel what the Holy Spirit's saying tonight. But I do believe that he's healing you. Will you give me your hand? I'll anoint your hand. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father, for healing tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible for you. And you've wondered if some things are impossible for God. But God says nothing's impossible for Him. He can change multiple things, even the things in your body. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father, tonight. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. He's your Father. All you need to know tonight is that your Father, He cares for you. He restores you. He heals you completely in Jesus' mighty name right now, right now, right now. I take authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I take authority in Jesus' mighty name. I say, be healed. 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 Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 May the Father hold you in his arms. Thank you, Father, that you're doing deep work in our heart right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. The Spirit has come upon you. The Spirit has come upon you. But the Holy Spirit will break that and restore you and heal you completely and set you free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you free in Jesus' name. Right now, free in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, free. Free in Jesus' name. Free in the mighty name of Jesus. Free in the mighty name of Jesus. Every burden lifted. Every burden lifted. Every hurt. Everything restored in the mighty name of Jesus. That which the enemy has sent for your destruction, God would use for his glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you healed now. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. God bless you. God is good. God is good. We'll talk afterwards again, yeah. <laughs> Where uh, God bless you. Just come back from traveling. And just as uh, I saw uh, just as I saw Shelly in a, in a second I saw you. And um, I, saw, I saw that in the ministry that God has prepared for you, there's going to be much more traveling involved with it. <laughs> but I see great doors opening up for you all over. And I see God doing amazing things with connections. But I see like also that, you, that you, you're tentative in the season. And we know why. There, there's history behind it. But God would say that don't be afraid for where he's taking you because he's got you. He's got you in his hand. He set you apart. He set you apart for ministry. He set you apart for the things that he calls you to do. He set you apart for healing. He set you apart for restoration. He set you apart for many captives will be set free. I hear the words captives. Captives, chains will fall off as God gives you a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. And God would even heal your heart tonight. Begin that healing process deeper. As he has started, but I believe tonight there's something that's going to happen in the spirit. It will excel the healing process over your own life for you to be able to minister more effectively even in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Father, this is anoint Moira tonight, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your hand comes upon her as I anoint her hands even tonight, Father. I thank you that as she touches, Lord, that healing would come upon her even tonight in Jesus' mighty name. The deep parts, Lord, that we many times that others do not know about, Father, but only you know the deep, deep, deep parts, Lord, of our soul. That only you know, Father, I know that your spirit would begin to move in the mighty name of Jesus right now. I thank you, Lord, that your spirit would come and would accelerate that which you are doing over Moira's life, Father. Thank you, Lord, that as she touches others, Father, that healing and restoration would happen in the mighty name of Jesus. Even tonight, Father, that that mantle will rest upon her, Father, to touch the broken and that they would be healed in Jesus' mighty name for a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom and a word in season of discernment. The Lord says he's going to sharpen your discernment 
to discern what the enemy is doing over people's lives and to discern which is of God and which is not of God and that you would discern the wisdom what you need to apply in that person's life and the Lord says I would accelerate that over your ministry right now in the mighty name of Jesus I would even begin to speak to you in this night I would even begin to speak to you in this morning that's coming and I would begin to speak to you in clarity and I would begin to speak to you with, wis- with words of wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Even over your own life, there's wisdom that the Lord says He'd be giving you right now. Wisdom in decision-making. There's some, things that are, there's some things in the air that you need to tie up, and the Lord says, I will give you wisdom in that to tie those things up. I will tie them up. I will give you the words. I will give you the words. Do not stress. Do not worry. Do not fear, for I'm with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, uh, sorry, it's just going to flow with Pastor Julius now. Um, as we were worshiping Pastor Julius, I saw a field. I saw a field of wheat, and I saw a wind blowing over the wheat, and I saw some of the wheat being blown over in the wind. But I would, I would, ha- the Lord would have us know tonight that the same wind that blows some wheat over is the same wheat that is just there to blow the chaff away from our lives. So we must never look at a wind and think it's destroyed everything. We must take out of the wind that part of the wind that can blow the chaff away for us. Bless you. Bless the Lord of my soul. Mm, mm, mm. God is so good. Sandy, we need to pray over you. Sorry, I'm not going to be long, I hope. But it's exciting to see what Lord God's doing in different people's lives. And many times we, when, I, when I used to sit in meetings like this, I often say, Lord, when is it me? I think I said for, I remember a season when we, we had lots of prophets come to this house. Everyone would always be slain in the spirit and Julius would stand. I would say, no, there's something wrong with me. God doesn't want to touch me, doesn't love me, whatever. But, you know, the seasons come and the seasons go. When you need to receive a word, you receive a word. When you don't receive a word, don't stop believing. Because in actual fact, you don't stop doing what you're doing. You stop, still worship God. You know, even though God can be quiet in a season, God can say, walk, because I've given you instruction in the previous season already what you need to do. Don't stop on the word that God has given you previously. Amen. Continue on that word, eh, Sam? Continue on that word that God's given you. I just want to pray over Sandy. Father, we thank you tonight for Sandy. Lord, as I anoint her hands. Father, also a new season over your life in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, wounds. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that anointing increasing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Father, I just want to thank you for Sandy. For Father, I thank you tonight. Even that anointing that has come upon her, Father. Just that heaviness of that anointing, Father. Don't. There it is, there it is, there it is, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you increase that which she is doing amongst the ladies that is standing around her, Father. That even now you will see more breakthrough and healing and deliverance. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. I see deliverance over you, over you and the ladies around you. I just see you breaking chains, chains, chains of addictions, chains of abuse. Chains, 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 chains are falling off in Jesus' mighty name. Just as you speak that word in sin, just as you pray for them, just as you love them, just as you hug them, I see he hurts coming off people. I see chains of, of, of all kinds of deep, deep, deep things that they're holding in the inside. They will release it, and the Lord will begin to heal them, and the Lord will begin to set them free. I even see demonically, as you, as you, these signs will follow those that believe. The, the demons will go in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the demons will go in the mighty name of Jesus. A season of deliverance coming over the ministry that God has given you. And as you hold them and as you pray for them and as you just encourage them, the Lord would say they would begin to be set free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We go. Just leave me, she says. I'm going to leave her there. That's okay. Let me say to you something about the anointing, all of you have it. 
You know, if there's a time in your life when you want to look around what, what other people have, don't do that. Don't look at what's happening to Sandy and say, oh, Lord, why didn't it happen to me? It's not what God has asked you to do. There's different seasons for things in your life. And, and the Lord, I've learned to stay in my lane and be confident in who I am. And in the times when God has been quiet, I've been content with it. Yes, I first ask questions, Lord, what about me? What about me, Lord? I also need a word. I also need an encouragement. But be encouraged tonight that God is seeing everything that you're praying and knows every prayer that you pray and records everything and, and takes up every tear in heaven. And the Lord knows. He, he knows. And so don't, don't fret about it. Let us stand together as we're going to pray tonight. Father, we thank you for, for your word that is so powerful and effective. John chapter 3, that says, Lord, that those that have faith in you, those that believe will not perish, but will have eternal life. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, for those that believe will not perish, but will have eternal life. In Christ, we thank you, Lord, that we have this ability to put our faith in you. Lord, not in our own ability, not in our own way, not the way we can do it, but the way you're doing it through us and in us. I thank you for each one here tonight, Lord. I pray, whatever burden they're carrying, whatever obstacle they're carrying, Lord, that you would meet them tonight. Lord, that you will infuse them with new faith, Lord. New hope for tomorrow. New strength for the next season. Father, that they wouldn't give up, but that hope would rise up again within the church. Lord, that we begin to pray again. That you would give us the strength to pray for what's coming, Lord, that we wouldn't know that you have plans, that you have purposes in place, but Lord, that we would seek after you first, not the purposes, not the plans, not the power, but the God of the power, the God of the plan, the God of the purpose, the God of his will. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that we would seek after you again, intimacy in the church to be restored, prayer altars to be restored, ministry and anointing to be restored. Father, I pray that there would be an overflow of people that would realize what their giftings are in the spirit lord i pray tonight that each one yet here tonight will begin to see those dreams see those visions see those things that you want to see show them father i pray that spiritual eyes would be open in the mighty name of jesus tonight i pray that your spiritual eyes be unblocked in jesus mighty name your ears be opened up that you begin to hear god clearly when you read the word when you read the Word, that you would understand what it says in the Spirit, that the Spirit of God would teach you, that the anointing would teach you all things in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that you remove those obstacles. But Lord, even the ones that are facing obstacles, that you're using that <laughs> to sharpen, that you're using that to strengthen, that you're using that to draw them closer to you, God. I pray tonight, even though the enemy has sent things to destroy you, God will use it for His glory. God would use it for His glory. God would use it for His glory. God would use it. Corin, God's got a word for you tonight still. A word of encouragement for you tonight. God has given you wisdom. God has given you insight. And as you minister, as you minister to those people that God has laid on your heart, God will give you more word and God will give you more, more momentum in the Spirit. I pray for momentum because it's like it's slowed and stopped. It's like you need a bit of momentum in the Spirit. And God says, now, continue to pray. Continue to pray. Make lists of five people at a time. Make five people at a time. I don't know why five, number of grace. Five people at a time. And God's going to begin. And I see little groups forming out of what you're doing. And God says, I'm going to establish through you words of wisdom and words of knowledge and words of insight. And the Lord will give you a word in season for those five people at a time. And as those five people are established, they will take other five people. And so it will multiply in the Spirit, and I believe God's giving you that, because there's now momentum, and you need to continue to pray for those five names that the Lord will lay on your heart, and as you write them down, begin to write the first name, as you write the first name, God will give you the second, and third, and fourth, and fifth name, amen, that's how the Lord's going to work, He's not going to give you all five, He's going to give you one name, and from one name, it's going to flow to five names, and you're going to see, you're going to just write them down, and as you write them down, the Lord's going to begin specifically to speak to you about each one of those people. And as God would put a prophetic mantle over your mind and over your heart tonight and over your spirit tonight, you'll begin to have more insight and prophecy and, and words of, 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 of knowledge. And the Lord's going to begin to use you in that area. May God anoint you tonight. Come, let's pray for you quickly before you go. Father, we thank you tonight for, for Karen, Lord, that as she has a burden for those ladies, Father, and those people around her, 
as you give the names, Father, even that anointing right now in Jesus' mighty name, just as I anoint you on the forehead in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that that anointing will increase right now. Lord, it is an impartation from your spirit, Lord, of that mantle of prophecy that will begin to flow in the mighty name of Jesus and just healing balm that will flow from her hands, Father, and from her words and from her mouth, Father, as she speaks the word of God over their lives, that restoration will take place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for each one here tonight that's trusting you, Lord, for a word, that's trusting you, Lord, for a breakthrough, that's trusting you, Lord. But I pray tonight, draw them to your side, Lord. May we, may we know and may we fall in love all over with Jesus again. Lord, not, not for the things you can give, but who you are and what you've done for us already. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. If you, if you have questions or more prayer or, or, or more things, Father, we, we thank you for that. Amen. God bless you.